In this video, I will show you how to become a blockchain developer in 2023. Once you become a blockchain developer, you will be able to work on projects you love, enjoy the remote work lifestyle, and make some serious cash. I will cover what to learn, which project to build for a great portfolio, and how to get a job. If you are new here, my name is Julian, and I've been a blockchain developer since 2017. How much can you make as a blockchain developer? On average, blockchain developers earn $130,000 per year. And for some top experts, it can go up to $1 million per year. Yes, this is really high. Blockchain pays significantly more than other tech niches. But how about you? Are you going to become the next Satoshi Nakamoto and become filthy rich with blockchain? Hold on, I need to tell you about the elephant in the room. Crypto is a cyclical industry. It alternates between periods of intense activity called bull markets and periods of slower activity called bear markets. Right now, we are in a bear market, but the worst is already behind us. And most people expect the next bull market for next year. When the next bull market starts, the best opportunities will go to developers who already have some experience. You cannot start at the last moment. It will be too late. To get ready for the next bull market, you should get started now. And beside this, you have to realize that the blockchain technology moves fast, independently from crypto prices. The space is vibrant with tons of new technologies. There might be a bear market for cryptocurrencies, but not for blockchain development. Do you feel motivated to get into blockchain? If the answer is yes, like this video. And if the answer is no, like this video anyway. Next, let's talk of the use cases of blockchain technology. Finance, digital art, social media, and <coughs> scams. But let's stay focused on the legit use cases. And we're gonna start with finance. DeFi means decentralized finance. It's finance reinvented on the blockchain. This is the biggest use case of blockchain. At the top of the bull market, almost $200 billion were locked in DeFi projects. Let's go over some specific projects. Uniswap is one of the most famous DeFi projects. It allows traders to buy and sell crypto in a decentralized way. This is what we call a decentralized exchange. Aave is another famous DeFi project. It's a lending platform where you can borrow and lend crypto. Yearn Finance is yet another example of DeFi project. This is an automated trading bot for crypto. At every block, it reinvests your money in the most profitable DeFi project. Beside DeFi, another big use case is, is NFTs. NFT means non-fungible token. NFTs represent unique items that are stored on the blockchain. NFTs became very popular in 2021. They were mainly used to represent unique digital art. The most expensive NFT sold for $69 million. But don't worry, if you miss this bargain, there will be plenty of other opportunities in the next bull market. DeFi and NFTs are the two biggest use cases of blockchain. But in 2023, we saw new trends coming up, such as decentralized social media. This is basically social media, but on the blockchain without censorship, so that you can enjoy all the conspiracy theories without any restriction, such as whether or not reptilians rule the world. Lens is an example of decentralized social media. Lens is just a protocol on the blockchain, and anybody can build a different frontend with Lens as a backend. Okay, all of this is cool, but what is the difference with existing apps? Do blockchain apps have any benefits? Yes, there are many benefits both for users and developers. Blockchain apps are safer as users store their private keys themselves. If you never heard of private keys, this is the equivalent of a password. It allows users to authorize their actions. This is a very different situation than traditional apps. In traditional apps, all passwords are stored on a centralized server which acts as a giant honeypot for hackers. If a hacker manages to breach a server, they get access to absolutely everything. Whereas for a blockchain, there is no such centralized honeypot. Another benefit is that blockchain apps are resistant to censorship. Once the blockchain app is deployed, it's impossible to modify the code or arbitrarily modify the data of a user. This is very different from traditional apps where governments can force companies to ban certain content. Another benefit is that blockchain apps are permissionless. Anybody can use a blockchain app. There is no registration process, no need to be approved. Another benefit is that blockchain apps run 24-7. It's almost impossible to stop them. No need to worry about downtime or technical issues, it just works all the time. Another great thing about blockchain apps is that the code is public. 
It's possible to get the code of any blockchain app. Users can trust that the app really does what it claims to do. And builders can learn from any project. There is no secret. And finally, a last benefit is that anybody can build on top of existing blockchain apps. Blockchain apps are like Lego blocks that anybody can use. No need to ask the permission to use their API. It's public by default. Okay, so next, let's get into the technical details. We are going to start with the architecture of a blockchain app. We also call this a decentralized app, DAP, or Web3 app. For users, a blockchain app feels very similar to a web application. In a blockchain app, there is a front-end, which can be a web or mobile app. This is an interface to allow users to interact with the blockchain. Front-ends are usually coded with HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and a framework like React, the usual suspects. What is less usual though is the wallet. Wallets are used to confirm an action. This is where the private key of the user is stored. There is something very important to understand. Even though blockchain apps interact with wallets, technically wallets are not part of blockchain apps. Wallets are controlled by users and the private key never leaves a wallet. Otherwise, it would be a big security risk. The most popular wallet is MetaMask and it's a browser extension, but there are many others, including mobile wallets. Here's a typical interaction between a front-end and a wallet. The user clicks on a button to initiate an action, like buying a token. The front-end sends a message to the wallet. The wallet asks the user to confirm the action. And finally, after the confirmation, the wallet signs a message with the details of the action. That's what we call a transaction. The front-end also interacts with the blockchain. It reads data from the blockchain, and it also sends transactions to the blockchain. And in the blockchain, we also have smart contracts. Smart contracts are small programs usually coded with the Solidity programming language. Smart contracts are small, but they contain the most critical code of the app. This is what makes a blockchain app so special. I didn't mention any backend. In a blockchain app, the backend is usually very small and is only used to serve the frontend. As you can see, a blockchain app is in fact a regular web application, except that it interacts with the blockchain and with the wallet. Okay, so now you understand the architecture, but what do you have to learn to become a blockchain developer? If you want to go faster, I have a full course that will teach you everything you need to know in a single package. The link is down below. But if you prefer to learn everything by yourself, here is a list of what you should know. The first step is to understand the blockchain technology. You need to understand concepts like cryptographic hashes, public private keys and addresses, wallets, data structure of a blockchain, transactions, and proof-of-work algorithm. There are thousands of different blockchain projects, Bitcoin, Solana, Cardano, Ethereum, etc. Do you need to learn all of them? Absolutely. Otherwise, you will never be able to find a job in the industry. No, I'm kidding. There are only two blockchains that really matter. Bitcoin and Ethereum. The blockchain technology was created by Bitcoin. That's why it's important to know the basics of Bitcoin. And for that, I recommend to read the white paper of Bitcoin. The Bitcoin white paper was created by the creator of Bitcoin, Satoshi Nakamoto. It's a simple explanation of Bitcoin and it's only 10 pages long. Alternatively, the book Mastering Bitcoin of Andreas Antonopoulos is a classic. The other blockchain that you need to know is Ethereum. The vast majority of blockchain applications are deployed on the Ethereum blockchain or on other blockchains that use the Ethereum technology. These other blockchains are said to be EVM compatible and you can find them on this website. While Bitcoin is only able to process simple transactions, Ethereum can go much further thanks to so-called smart contracts. Smart contracts are small programs that run on blockchain, and this is what makes Ethereum so special. To learn Ethereum, you can read the yellow paper of Ethereum. This is a bit more difficult than the Bitcoin white paper, but don't be afraid by the parts with complex math. Most of the important stuff is explained with plain text. Another interesting source of information is the Ethereum improvement proposals. These are some proposed updates to the Ethereum protocols. There are hundreds of them, but you only need to know a few like EIP-1559 or EIP-5337. A special kind of EIP is ERC, which are only for blockchain applications, but not at the protocol level. More on this later. Scalability is one of the biggest challenges for blockchains. Ethereum 2.0 is the next version of Ethereum built for scalability. It will allow Ethereum to process many more transactions at a lower cost. Ethereum 2.0 is pretty complex, but you don't need to worry about it because it's just a protocol level update, not an application level update. 
it will not impact how we build blockchain applications. Ethereum 2.0 is going to be awesome, but it's not fully released yet. And in the meantime, other scaling solutions have emerged like Layer 2 blockchains. Layer 2 blockchains are secondary blockchains connected to Ethereum. They trade security for lower transaction fees. They are still very safe, just not as safe as Ethereum. And this level of security is enough for many blockchain applications. Currently, many blockchain applications decide to deploy on these blockchains instead of on Ethereum. I'm talking of blockchains like Polygon, Arbitrum, or Optimism. The great thing for us developers is that these blockchains all use the technology of Ethereum. So by learning Ethereum, you can also build apps for these other blockchains. All right, so after learning the blockchain technology, the next step is to learn smart contract development. For that, you will need to understand the Ethereum virtual machine or just EVM. That's the part of Ethereum that executes the smart contracts. Next, you will need to learn Solidity, the programming language for smart contracts. It looks like JavaScript, but don't let it fool you, it's very different. I suggest that you use Remix to experiment with Solidity. It's an easy to use Solidity IDE accessible in your browser. Instead of coding everything from scratch, it's better to reuse code that has already been tested and used by others. That's why you should become familiar with OpenZeppelin, a Solidity library with a lot of standard implementations. When a user sends a transaction, they have to pay transaction fees. The transaction depends on the complexity of your Solidity code. That's why, as a blockchain developer, you need to learn how to optimize your Solidity code. We call this gas optimization. Another very important topic is security. Smart contracts can store a lot of money, but if your Solidity code has a bug, it can be exploited by hackers. That's why you need to be familiar with the typical security vulnerabilities of smart contracts and how to avoid them. With smart contracts, testing is very important because once we deploy a smart contract, it's impossible to update it. We need to get it right before deployment. And to test your smart contract, you need a smart contract framework. I recommend to use either Hot Hot or Foundry. Hot Hot is in Node.js and it used to be the most popular. But in 2023, if you want to be cool, you have to use a Foundry, a framework written in Rust that can run tests much faster. And besides testing, another skill you need to learn is smart contract deployment. For this, you will need a smart contract framework like Foundry or Rust for the deployment script and an Ethereum node to send the deployment transaction. You can run your own Ethereum node, but it's a lot of work. It's much better to use a blockchain API that runs Ethereum nodes for you. And one of the most popular blockchain API is QuickNode, and they offer free accounts. Okay, so once you master all these skills, you will be a talented smart contract developer. Not as talented as me, of course. Don't be arrogant. And if you want to build a full blockchain application, you also need to build a front-end. Let's see what you need to learn for that. The front-end of a blockchain app is usually a regular web application. It means you need to master the basics of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And unless you enjoy spaghetti code, you also need a front-end framework to organize your code. React is the most popular option, but you can also use any other front-end framework like Vue or Angular. It's not easy to interact with a smart contract using raw JavaScript code. That's why it's recommended to use a library like Ethers. This is a JavaScript library that makes it very easy to call smart contract functions. The front-end will also interact with a wallet. The most popular one is MetaMask, so I highly recommend to get familiar with the API of MetaMask and how to connect to it. And after having learned all of this, will it be enough to become a blockchain developer? Almost. You still need to learn a few concepts related to the main use cases. For example, when it comes to decentralized finance, you should be familiar with the main project in the space as well as the main concepts such as ERC20, the standard for tokens, decentralized exchanges, yield farming, staking, and flash loan. When it comes to NFTs, you should know the ERC721 standard, how to create an NFT collection, how to mint an NFT, and how to handle metadata. Once you have learned blockchain development, how do you find your first job? I'm going to give you a few tips. 
Before you start to find a job, you need to have a specific positioning on the market. It's a bit counterintuitive, but by being more specific, you actually increase your chances of getting a job. If you have a broad positioning, it's harder to stand out. The first way to position yourself is to be a full-stack blockchain developer. A full-stack blockchain developer is responsible for building the whole blockchain application front-end, back-end, and smart contract. Another way to position yourself is to be a smart contract specialist. You will need to be very good with the EVM, Solidity, and how to write safe smart contract. This is one of the highest paid skills in blockchain. Smart contract specialists can make up to $300,000 per year. Another possibility is to be a security specialist. Billions of dollars were lost to hackers because of some bugs in smart contracts. Security specialists try to find vulnerabilities in smart contracts and report them in audits. This is by far the highest paid skill in blockchain. Senior security specialists can make up to $1 million per year. And finally, a last way to position yourself is to be specialized in a certain use case. For example, DeFi, NFT, or even a specific project like Uniswap. There are many other ways to position yourself and the best way is to be creative and combine several dimensions. For example, you could be a full stack blockchain developer for DeFi project. Once you define your positioning, the next step is to build your portfolio of projects to demonstrate your skills. Quality is better than quantity. It's better to focus on one very good project instead of several mediocre ones. Here are a few ideas. A decentralized exchange to buy and sell tokens. A DAO, which is basically a community with a bank account on the blockchain. An NFT marketplace to buy and sell NFTs. And in my course, we build all of this project, link below. Okay, and once you have your portfolio, how do you actually get a job? The easiest way to get started is not with a job, but with a freelance gig. It's a great way to get some experience that you can later leverage to find a full-time job. The easiest way to find a freelance gig is to go to real life events. Yes, I know I'm also an introverted anti-social person, but you have to understand that real life events are way more effective to build a human connection. You could go to either blockchain conferences, hackathons or meetups, or even better, organize an event. In fact, this is how I got my first gig in blockchain. Another way to find job opportunities is social media. By building a social media following, you can position yourself as an expert and attract potential employers and customers. And the way you do this is by creating tutorials about what you just learned. LinkedIn, Twitter, and YouTube are all very good for this. This is also what I did with my YouTube channel in the blocks, and this is how I became successful as a blockchain developer. And finally, you can also find blockchain jobs on blockchain job boards like CryptoJobList.com, Web3 Career, as well as general job board like Indeed or even LinkedIn. To prepare for blockchain interviews, you can check out a tool called Jumdesk. This is like lead code, but for blockchain. The link to Jumdesk is below. Disclaimer, I'm the creator of Jumdesk. So now you know how to become a blockchain developer in 2023. The next step is to learn Solidity, the programming language for smart contracts. And for this, check out this Solidity tutorial on my channel. It's perfect to get started. I will see you there. Bye.